Happy April, Mission Makers. If you're watching this video on the day of its release and you've already been dealing with April Fool's jokes all morning, you'll be happy to know that in this video, we're gonna get serious about some things that you can do to improve the size of your mission and the density of your challenges. This episode is all about how long your mission should take. So you've launched your mission, you've got a bunch of great signage and advertising in your visitor center and on your social media pages, but how do you make sure your guests are actually completing your missions once they have downloaded them? Well, if you're noticing in your statistics that some challenges just aren't getting played like the other ones in your mission, this may be an indicator that your guests aren't quite making it to the end of the mission, especially if the challenges being overlooked are at the end of the mission. Remember, while your missions are a really exciting way to connect with your visitors, most of them are still primarily there to enjoy the public space. So once you've made all the exciting content for your mission, you also want to make sure that the mission doesn't interfere with the natural flow of the guest's regular visit. So for example, if you want to get the attention of a visitor who was originally planning to do a 40 minute walk around your park, your mission ideally shouldn't take too much longer than that or involve any strenuous activity that wouldn't normally be a part of that walk. Usually it takes people around 20 minutes to walk a single mile. So if you want to make a 40 minute mission, you can already do the math and conclude that around two miles will probably be a good threshold for most visitors before they start getting tired and uh, give up on the mission or do something else. Once you've figured out the time and distance for your mission, the last thing you need to do is space out your challenges evenly. Most of your guests will pause briefly to play the challenges on your path for maybe about a minute or so. So you also want to think about how often the guest is stopping in the middle of their walk. And this is a great reason to give your challenges a bit of space so that your players aren't literally stopping more often than they're walking. You also definitely don't want to place your challenges so far apart that the player's phone goes into lock or it runs out of battery before the mission ends. Now, if you're looking at your current missions and you do feel that one of them is just a little bit too big right now, the easiest thing to do is to divide the mission up into smaller ones. This is especially helpful if you have a silver package or higher because it means that you can have multiple missions going within the same general area. You'll also end up doing a huge favor for your user turnout if each guest is completing multiple smaller missions in a single visit, as opposed to one big one. And lastly, you've heard me say this time and time again, but once your mission is ready, go out and play it for real. Your experiences will be a pretty good indicator of the average guest experience and whether or not your mission is engaging enough to keep them playing from start to finish. We hope this helps you get the most out of your user turnout, and when we return in May, we'll have some more new features to show you in the Mission Maker. It was just so fun and I hope to do this again.